Welcome folks. We are going to do an, an ideal op amp example and we are going to use the classical inverting amplifier circuit. If you look into the uh, op amp, this is the op amp we have. And to analyze any ideal op amp circuit, what we have to do is we have to apply the following two conditions. Whenever we want it to uh, analyze the circuit, use an ideal op amp. The first condition states that the voltage at the inverting input V minus must equal to the voltage at the non-inverting input V plus. This is extremely important condition. That is because we said that the ideal op amp has an, an infinite gain. Otherwise, if that is not true, if I connect one of them to like let's say 3 volts and the other one to let's say minus 2 volts, then the output voltage will be saturated. Basically, when we wanted to apply ideal op amp, we must stress that V minus equals to V plus, or we are going to state that the output voltage is saturated. In most times, we're going to state that V minus equals to V plus. The second condition basically has to deal with the current. The ideal op amp will have zero input current going into the inverting input. So if you look into the inverting input as shown here, that you're going to see that the current going into it is zero amp. And the same thing applies also to the non-inverting input. The current to the non-inverting input going to also be zero amp, which basically says that the current going into the op amp is going to be zero. Now keep in mind that the output current of the op amp can be any value, and also the output voltage is independent of the output current. But this is a minor requirement that we don't have to stress it at this time. However, when we wanted to analyze the op amp circuits using ideal op amps, we must stress those two conditions. Basically, the voltage at the non-inverting input will equal to the voltage at the inverting input. Also, the current at the non-inverting input will equal to the current at the inverting input. Those requirements are extremely important. So what we're going to do now is we are going to look at the most simple yet most basic and fundamental block of uh, op amp circuits, which is the inverting amplifier. So if we look into the inverting amplifier, basically here is the op amp. And in this op amp, we are going to connect the, the non-inverting input to ground. Then we are going to apply the input voltage source Vs through a resistor R1 into the inverting input, the V minus. And then we're going to have the feedback resistor from the output to the input, and we are going to call it R2. And here is V out shown as indicated in the circuit. Now we are ready to analyze the circuit. So the first thing we are going to look at is the fact that the V plus which is the inverting input, is connected to ground. And by applying the first condition, we know that the non-inverting input is equal to the inverting input. That means this particular node going to also be equal to zero. That is basically because V plus equals to V minus. Then we can state that V minus will equal to zero. Now that we know the voltage at the inverting node, we can determine the current I1 that is going through this resistor R1. So the current going through this resistor R1 is basically the voltage across that resistor over the resistance itself. And we can find that current basically by Ohm's law. So we can say that I1 will equal to the voltage across this resistor which is Vs minus 0 over R1, and that is basically Vs over R1. Also, for I2, we can do the same thing. I2 is the current going through this second resistor, R2, as shown here, and we can find this current using also Ohm's law. So, we can state that the current I2 will equal to the voltage across this resistor, which is 0 minus V out over R2. 
which is basically minus V out over R2. Now we know that we can apply KCL at the inverting node, the V minus. And to apply the KCL at the inverting node, we need to know what's the currents going into the op amp. But we know this op amp is ideal, so we can say that the current going through the inverting input is zero, as well as the current going into the non-inverting input is also zero. Now, by applying KCO, we can state that I2 will equal to I1 because the currents are equal. The current going in will equal to the current going out. So the current going out is I2 and the current going in is I1. We stated them to be equal. But I already solved for I2 to be negative V out over R2. So I'm going to state that here, negative V out over R2. And that is basically will equal to I1, which we already solved for to be Vs over R1. So we're going to say that negative V out over R2 will equal to Vs over R1. And now we can multiply both sides of the equation by negative R2. And what I will end up with is V out will equal to negative R2 over R1 times Vs. Now this is the equation that describes the output as a function of the input for the inverting amplifier. Very powerful equation and it's going to pop up a lot to us as we continue through the op amp circuits. Now what is important here is the way we solved for V out. And basically what we did is we said that we are going to force the inverting input equal to the non-inverting input. And since the non-inverting input is zero, then the inverting input is going to be zero volt as well. And by doing that, we were able to solve for I1 and we equated it to I2. And from there, we were able to solve for the out. So now let's do a numerical example just to give you a hands-on experience of what's going on with the ideal op amp. So we are going to design an inverting amplifier so that V out will equal to negative 20 times Vs. Basically, we are saying that the ratio of R2 over R1 must equal to 20. Now, to choose those resistors, we have to be very careful because you want it to make sure that when you design the op amp, the op amp is not ideal, but you want the op amp to behave as ideal or near ideal by picking up the right values for the resistors. A very good uh, values for resistors will be to select R1 and R2 in the ranges anywhere between 1K to 100K. Those considered to be very good ranges, but you can go sometimes as low as 500 ohms and uh, as high as a couple of hundreds of thousands of ohms, like 200K ohms uh, or so. And that also depends on the type of op amp that we are using. But uh, uh, in this example here, we are uh, considering to use something we call general purpose op amps. For example, the LM741 op amp will be considered to be general purpose op amp that we can use. Then we can say that our uh, resistor value going to be selected to be one kilo ohm resistance, which leads to R2 to be 20 kilo ohm resistance. In computer simulation like ORCAD B-SPICE, you can see that you're going to get a very good results of uh, a gain of uh, negative 20, which means that the output voltage will be negative 20 times the input voltage. So let's do that and let's run a computer simulation and show you how is the circuit going to look like? So as you can see here, we have an, an example of the uh, inverting amplifier that we have implemented in ORCAD. And you can see that we are applying a triangular pulse signal at the input with a pulse width of uh, 5 milliseconds and the period of that pulse is 10 milliseconds and the value of the pulse is going to jump from 0 to 0 0.1 volts and then we are also applying a 1 kilo ohm resistance for R1 
and 20 kilo ohm resistor for R2. Here we have a load resistor equal to 10K. Now it is worth mentioning that this 10K is not gonna affect much the gain equation because we force in the current through R1 to equal to the current through R2, which forces V out to be 20 times V1. So RL here gonna be irrelevant or independent of what's the gain of the amplifier as long as the op amp will be able to supply this resistor the rl resistor with current beside that this circuit gonna work fine we did simulate the circuit so let's go ahead and run the simulation and show you what we have so you can see that this red line over here that will read the uh, 0.1 volts peak and it is a rectangular pulse as shown here and you can see that V out gonna be inverting, which basically means that when V i is positive, V out is negative because it inverts its sign. And the peak value is at negative two volts. So because we have a gain of negative twenty, when it, when V i will jump to zero point one volt, V out will jump down to negative two volts because. 0.1 times negative 20 will give us negative 2 and you can see that this is a rectangular pulse also so it continues and it gives us some nice square wave as well i hope you like this example and i also hope that this will help you in your studies and in learning op amps